Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Glory be to God in the Amen. Glory be to God in the Amen. Oh, in his mercies and your word for heaven. Amen. For oh, his mercies and your word for heaven. Amen. Glory be to God. In the Lord's Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Oh, his mercies are there forever. Amen. Oh, his mercies and there forever. Amen. I Spend the Lord's goodness, eat mercy and, and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. We have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you are been so good. You are so good to us. Oh Lord, you are so good. In the lives every day. Oh Lord, you are been so good. You are so good to us, O oh Lord, you are excellent in our love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think we have seen the Lord's goodness. Yes, Lord. His mercies and compassion. We have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. We are yes. seen the Lord's goodness. Yes. His mercies and compassion. Yes. We are seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, you are. So good. Yes, Lord. You've been so good to us. Oh, Lord, you are so excellent in our lives. You are so good. You are so good to us. Oh, Lord, you are In our lives. Hallelujah. You've been so good. Thank you, Father. You are a good, good Father. Your mighty Father. God. It's, uh, it's, it's been so good to us. Thank you, Jesus, for this new day. Yes. Take glory, Father. Father. Take glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take glory, Now forevermore. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Take glory, Father. Yes, Lord. Take glory, Holy God, now forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity, O oh Lord. Take glory, lives. We honor you today with our life. Thank you, Lord. This new day, 
Thank you for every day. Thank you for everything you have been doing for us. Good, good Father. This new day, this new day manifested. And you have been to your greatness. You be part of those that will be alive in it. Thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you. Worship you this morning. Worship all the glory. Yes, all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the, take all the adoration. This to your greatness, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Once again, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord, for everything. You are Lord. Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the glory, Father. You deserve it. Thank you. You deserve all the honor. Thank you. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to your great name. Thank, Thank you, Father. Thank In you. Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we you know we want to continue in this in this theme of thanksgiving yes. because you are a great Father. You yes. are a faithful God. You have given yes. us this opportunity. It's not out of who you are. It is yes. the, out of the abundance of who you are, which yes. is love, Father. Yes. Anybody, anybody that loves. It belongs to you. Anybody yes. that loves knows you. For yes. the grace, oh Lord, to be able to, 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 to be you. That is why we are always gathered to you, to seek your mind, for you yes. to reveal who you are to us so that yes. we can become you. But thank I thank you. you for this grace. Thank, thank you for this love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for, for, for your mercy that has granted us this opportunity because it's not it's not based on who we are that we are God. It is out of the abundance of who you are. Thank, Thank you, you, Father, for this new day that you have made us see. And as we come to, the, to, to this new day and we are gathered unto you, Father, come and bless us with your word. Man. Let your word bless us, O oh Lord. Let it make us whole in Christ Jesus. Let it lead us in the path of life. Man. Let it let it, let it be a fourth fruit, a fruit of love, a fruit of patience and yes. kindness and, yes. and humility. Yes. And also gentleness and patience yes. for yes. us to be able to reveal you wherever we go, not yes. to continue yes. to receive, reveal flesh. Help us to, to, to deny ourselves. Help us to be dead to flesh, oh Lord, to receive your spirit. Yes. Help us to die daily to, to all the iniquities of our heart. Help us to to, to, for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us, to make us whole in Christ Jesus, yes, for yes, us to be yes. united with it and to reveal and to glorify who you are in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank yes. you. We don't want to take you take this for granted because every day we wake up, you know, and we have life. Yes. But it is out of who you are. Yes. But we don't want to continue to, even our gathering of at this particular time, we don't want to take you for granted, but I take glory and adoration and let your name be exalted. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Let your name be glorified and magnified in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you uh, once again for the opportunity to, to uh, go through this word again. Pastor, thank you for taking yesterday. I think from um, next week, I'll probably go back to <laughs> to Wednesdays again. No Thank problem, you for holding no it down. I mean, Thank you very much. No sir. problem, sir. No problem, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so today, you know, it is, like I said, we've been dealing with a particular topic that God is trying to manifest his will in our life. That's why, you know, the, is it the word of God has pushed to, you know, brings life to our life. And, you know, and it's a, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And as we continue to, you know, persistently seek Him, we will be revealed to, and the Holy Spirit will let those words, you know, germinate and bear forth fruits of repentance or who we are, who we were, 
to who God wants us to be so that we can exhibit his character and his character, the combination or the culmination of his character is love. So when you think about it, like I said, uh, first day we started dealing with this, this you know, gen being gentle, being humble, you know, those are character, you know, the character which Christ showcased when he was on earth. He was gentle, he, he, he loved, he was humble, even until death. Those are the characters that Christ revealed. And that is the revelation of who God is. You know, so for us, God is trying to reveal himself to us through the teachings that we've been going through for the past four days. I think it's very important that he wants to make us new in him. Mm -hmm. And as we read this word today, I hope, you know, we, we embrace this newness and let the Holy Spirit illuminate our hearts so that we'll be truly transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, like I said, it's a continuation of what we've been reading. Uh, text that we, that, that for today, it's be gentle. I know yesterday I talked about, you know, the, the revelation of me always, you know, in a conversation with my friend and said, you know, you know, why, you, you know, the, the, these, the, 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 the character of always being right. And when you think about it, I never even saw the description of what pastor displayed today until I saw it now, because on the book, he won't say that. But I think on, on the online portion, it will tell you that. He yeah. say, what, you know, be teachable. You are not always right. You know, there's a tendency for us to always want to be right because based on the small knowledge that God has revealed to us, we feel that we are all encompassing. And that is why there's a warning for us to take heed all the time that we may feel that we're standing, but we already, you know, mm. lost our way. Mm. The, the point for us, you know, is to continually seek God so that he will be the one leading us. Because most of the time, if we don't seek him, if we already assume that we already know the way, just like, the, you know, Joshua and the host of the, the, the armies of the Israelites, since God has been with them, they already thought he was always going to be with them when he went to face the people of I. But the point is for us to humble ourselves so that we can seek him persistently so that he can lead us to the path where we need to go. And our text today was taken from Proverbs. Proverbs 13, verse 8. And I read it, then I have some text to go through, then we can fully discuss the old text. Verse 18 says, I'm reading a new living translation. It says, if you ignore criticism, you will end up, you will end in poverty and disgrace. But if you accept correction, you will be honored. So he will, whoever eats correction is honored. Mm. And when you think about it, if you, if you link it to the word of God, to, to another portion of the Bible, we said, humble yourself, then you will be lifted up. Mm. You know, it is, a, you know, you know, humble yourself because, you know, accept your weakness mm. and you will be equipped. Mm. Most of us, we, we, you know, we, we don't accept any, you know, criticism or if somebody comes up with that, we're already in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mode of attack. Mm. We are built that way. Mm. To want to defend ourselves even society will say stand up for yourself mm. you know we even have songs when we grow up we say stand up for your rights don't yeah. give up before you know we are we, right. it's culturally in, in embedded in our life that somebody is trying to step on us you know we have stickers on the back of our cars that say, don't tread on me back up <laughs> you know as in we are you know growing up you know we you know the society has embedded the fact that you know we, we we are not humble even to 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 even even and we you know right now we know it's rebellion is as you know is it says is as dangerous as witchcraft because we have you know build that character but god is telling us for us to to submit a call to yield in our life because most of the time we know we're not even always right that is why we have to continually seek God because it is he that can, you know, he is the righteous one. He is the one that is right. We are not right. Even uh, the fact that we're gathered together here, it is the righteousness of God that has brought us 
to this point. It is not based on what we have done wrong because, like I said, that's why we are called not to judge because we are not. God is the only righteous God. Yes. And he's the only righteous judge. Yes. So for us, a call to eat, to take it, to eat correction so that we'll be honored because as soon as we, as we, are, as we yield, God will uplift off us. So I want to quickly read uh, two texts and I'm going to run through it because they're kind of long. There's one thing that I saw there and the text is used a little bit in our teaching today and it's James. And it's James chapter one. And James chapter one, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of things that is packed in that chapter one from mm -hmm. James. But I want to read from verse 12 just to run through it. Then I'll explain the revelation that I'm getting from there. It said, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. And afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So, can, so for whatever, it's a, you know, in, in this particular one, we say, whoever eats correction is honored. But another way, God blesses those who patiently endure testing. A call to be patient, to be humble, and to be gentle. Because when you look at those, the word gentle, you can relate it to being patient enough to be able to hear the other person and humble enough to want to learn or listen. Because one thing that we don't do is listen. It said, God bless you those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised. Because now they are patient enough to let God be God. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. And we know this, you know. Then I'll skip to 16. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Who, who, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from, from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts any shift in shadow. We know this. God is faithful. But verse 18 is what I wanted to talk about before we now go to the, the text that is used today, which is from 19 to 21. He said, God, himself, you know, in verse 18, he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. Mm. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. God himself is the one that chose us mm. to, to make us new through his word. Mm. So if we don't heed to his word, we will not be made new. We will not be honored and we will not be lifted up. And it goes back to that verse 12, that God blesses those who patiently endure testing by seeking him and they will receive the crown of life so but if you now go back to that 18 it said he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word which is christ jesus so for us so out of all creation we became his possession but we have he chose to you know to renew us to bring to make us new but it's true his word but if we don't eat the word of god we are not made new and if you now look at the, from verse 19, it now states what we need to do to be able to be made new, to eat to this word. And that is the point of my 19. It said, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen. The point is to be patient, humble yourself and be gentle, to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. Mm. Because the, the true word that God is revealing to us, we are supposed to eat it. But if we are not patient enough, when God is using somebody to reveal himself to us, we will not know. We will be in a mode of attack. When God is even trying to, you know, change us, transform us, convict us, rebuke us, and teach us. Because the point here is for us to be able to listen and learn what he's trying to tell us. He said, human anger does not produce righteousness, God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly. That is the word, like it's the synonym of gentle. It's like gent we can use the word gently accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has power to save your souls. Mm -hmm. And verse 22 expresses so don't just listen to this word, let this word transform you. Because don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says, otherwise, you're not fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. For if you listen to the word, 
I don't obey. It looks like glancing at your face in the mirror. That is the point. The point is for us to eat. It's not only to listen to the correction. Because some of us can listen and be patient, but inside our hearts, we're like, let him just finish talking. I don't want to, uh, let me not talk so that they will say I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm not this. You know, we are prepared to fool ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in God is the one that can see our thoughts. We're like, oh, let me just pretend in this particular position. But the point is to eat. That point, the, 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 the eat is more than just listening is to take it in heart and let the Holy Spirit manifest it in us. The word of God is the one, like in verse 18, that brings us into the newness of who we are. And if we don't listen, if we are quick to react, we will not have the response. And that is why he said that human anger, a response to the word of God, it will not produce any righteousness. But if we let the word of God, in that one, you say, if you humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart, it is, is one that is going to save us because he has power to save your souls. So when you think about it, this is a call to take heed because we don't even know where God is speaking to us. But if you're always reacting, we will not know. Even, you know, and as we're going to go through this, text today we will see all that you know god has tr tried to express to us that most of the time maybe even to our children that we don't listen and also i just want to quickly read philippians 2 it said philippians 2 says have the attitude of christ is there any encouragement encouragement from belonging to christ any comfort from his love any fellowship together in the spirit are you as tender and compassionate all these things encapsulate who Christ is, right? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one, with one mind and purpose. Our purpose is to be in agreement. Listen, you know, eat when God is revealing himself through people. He said, don't be selfish to try to impress others. Be humble. And we always, the, that's it, be, be humble is synonymous, synonymous with gentle. Be gentle. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others. You must have the same attitude Christ Jesus had. And what is the attitude? Verse 6 expresses who Christ really is and what we are called to be. He said, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. And what is that? A gentle position of a slave. And which is not a slave. We know he's God and was born a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him. So, so now, if you now circle back to our text today, say whoever is correction, whoever humbles himself, whoever is gentle and yields to God, it will be honored. So when he said, verse 8 says, Christ, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declared that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So I as a Christians, we are called to submit, to yield, to, to, to humble ourselves, to take heed of the word of God, and we will be honored. The word of God, like we said in, in Timothy, it is made, to, you know, is inspired by a spirit to convict, to rebuke, but most importantly, to correct us so that we will not continue in a lie of perdition so that we'll be made new the word of god to make us new and how are we going to receive the word of god if we are always reacting uh, when things don't go our way so let, let's if our time is going pretty much so let's just read the devotion to this i said when someone corrects you be teachable and not unreachable let every man be quick to listen but slow to use his tongue and slow to lose his temper in james 1 19. if you do the first two things the third one naturally falls into place. If you are quick to listen and slow to answer back, you are going to be slow to lose your temper. 
whoever eats correction is honored. So use your ears more than your mouth mm. and be willing to accept correction. The wisest people have a teach me attitude and willing to learn from others. You can learn from anyone if you, if you just know the right questions to ask. And that is why Christ revealed that again. If we go and read Matthew 7, because most of us, we always read Matthew 7 and based on the questions we have ordered. He said, Christ was telling us to keep probing because we need to know more by communion with God. In verse 7, Matthew 7, 7, say, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Most of us is what our needs. But if we want to know who God is, yeah. if we want to know his mind, mm -hmm. say, keep on seeking. And when you say seek something, he's not, you know, seek, you know, and you will find, keep on knocking and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open. For us to keep probing, not, you know, not reconciling ourselves that we already are there, but be open, you know, when the message of truth will always come to us to, 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 to make us in like we've read in that verse 18 of that it is the word of God that bets us into his newness. He said, the wisest people have a teach me attitude. I'm willing to learn. From others, you can learn from anyone. That is the point that I was making up because we don't know when God is using people around us, teachers. So are we, if you're going to react all the time, that we will not be able to bear forth fruit where that word is supposed to actually, you know, when we are, when it go, God is using those particular, that's why I say endure testing because even our test might just come by our reaction of one person, maybe just overreacted to us. Those tests, God is using it to, it's not like it's God that's sending, you know, we're just in that position. So if we allow the Holy Spirit, if we listen, if we are calm, if we seek God in that particular time, God will reveal what, you know, we're supposed to do part time and, we, and, and what we're supposed to gain from that particular word that is coming to us, no matter how it is, you know, because we think about words that are negative and positive, even from the negative standpoint, there's a revelation in that test. If we don't, if we are patient enough to hear. It said, you can learn from anyone if you just ask the right question. It is important to, that you, you never stop asking questions. That is why that Matthew 7 is very important. Because the moment you are through learning in, in life, you are through, period. That means you're done. Be teachable, not unreachable. Osborne, can you learn from your wife? Or does that threaten you? What makes, what she, when she makes a suggestion, do you get defensive? Do you take every comment as a threat to your manhood? Wife, can you learn from your husband? Parent, can you learn from your children? If you want to end up lonely in life, never admit your mistakes, never learn from anyone and never let anyone teach you anything. How long has it been since you admitted to your spouse, only I was wrong, it was my fault. Some people haven't said that in years. The Bible says, Humbly accept the word planted in you. That's why I say, like, how do we know when God is trying to, you know, even in a court, in, in, a, in conflict, God is revealing something in that particular time that we should not think of ourselves as, you know, the best things in sliced bread. We should take the humble, in humble position of what Christ did. You know, Christ never did anything, but he took the humble position and he went to the cross because, you know, there was a purpose in that cross and the purpose is a restoration and wholeness see a, so the word humble here means gentle gently accept the word of god that is planted in you when you approach god's word you ought to approach it with a gentle or humble attitude that says lord i am willing to be taught a call for a christianity is a call to surrender to yield to submit and if we want to prove that we are submitting to God, then we must reflect it based on our actions when we get out there. So when God is revealing to us that we are rebellious out there, it is because, and we feel maybe when we come to, our, to the church or to this fellowship that, ah, I'm 
submit. God, you know, you're not submit, you're not being submissive because when you get out there, your guards are always up. So the reason why, to me, this is a recurring theme for four days is because God wants us to take a position of humility so that his word can transform and change us and make us new. And all those tests that we face out there is a test to truly say that, to, to, to show we are fully submissive to him. You know, because to us, we might be thinking we are submitting ourselves to those people when we're just letting them run over us. But it is a true submit in a true test of submission to who God is, because we let him be who he is, because he is the one that owns the world, he is the one that has control of it. But next time, if you get into that situation, you know, and we blow up again, then that means we are fully not submitted to God because it says whoever eats correction is honored. And I hope God will continue to reveal himself to us. You know, for someone like me, it's a reoccurring thing. And as long as, like we said, we are a work in progress, but God, you know, he's doing this work every day in our conversation with our children, with our wives, our families, our colleagues, you know, even in the fellowship, you know, he's looking for a way to reconcile us. And that is why we have continually, you know, you know, have this team coming up about patience, endurance, you know, in our life, perseverance. But God wants us to persist in seeking it so that we, you know, will be elevated. We will be humble in knowing it. And may God help us in Jesus' name. So let's have contributions today. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. I mean, you. Uh, what else can we say? There is nothing else that we can. Uh, anything that we say right now, just going to just repeat every word that you have spoken this morning. The the breakdown that you did in the book of James one said it all. It said it said it all. But one thing that I always say is that when you see God in every situation. Um, you put yourself in a position of humility because that means you see that the situation is not, you're not able to handle it. So you call God into it. And whenever you come to the presence of God that you call God into a situation, uh, that means that you're surrendering the situation to his end. So that's why I always have the perspective that in all circumstances, no matter how little, no matter how big it is, I find myself at the lower level of that situation and submit myself to God so he can visit that situation for me. The, the last paragraph on this, I say, the word humble here means gentle. When you approach God's word, you ought to approach it with a what? Gentle, surrendering. And humble, meaning lower yourself down. Attitude saying, Lord, I am willing to be taught what is in this for me, whether it's a bad situation, God, where are you in it? Whether it's a good situation, Lord, where are you in it? Make ourselves teachable and not unreachable. God is stretching and his hand, stretching forth his hand all the time, but we every time it stretched out to us. We walk away from him. And thank you because you used that Matthew 7. When you say, why only say seek and you shall find. When God is stretching out his head, instead of us to come close to him, we are looking at opposite direction. So we are not seeking him to get what we need. We are using our own internet. And when we need things, we don't go to him. Instead of us to knock at the door of heaven, we will be knocking at the door of people that we know. We'll be knocking at the door of our intellect, and we don't really go to God who has the source of everything that we need. So we are now able to humble ourselves to see God in many things. And that's why we are missing out. So having a teachable moment, it's always coming from the presence of God. There is no way that we can think that we are bigger than God, that we will not be defeated. That's what happened to Lucifer. 
that he think he can set his glory above God because of his lack of humility. And that's the same thing he passed on to Eve, that Eve thinks that we, God created her to be, it's not enough, that she wants to be bigger. Why would you want to do that? When we humble ourselves in the end of God, that's why he asked us that work out our salvation out in tremble and fear, not in the terrible trembling, but in the loving and in the submissive trembling. Because you didn't respond, doesn't mean you're stupid. But when you say God is the one leading you, humility comes in you. And that is what people will see. Christ was not weak when he was on the face of the earth, but because he knew his purpose. He knew why he was here. And he knew who was guiding him. And he knew who was following, who was sending him a message. Most of the time we've lost that touch. We don't remember who God is anymore. We don't remember who God is anymore. Only time we remember is when we come together. It's only when we get the chance to, 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 to need something. When we constantly remember that God, when we delight in him all the time, he humbles us because he's now in control over our lives. And I pray that God will give us the opportunity to you to tell it to the Holy Spirit so he can guide us right in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor. I think, like I said, the, the song, like you said, sir, which is really clear, it is that in conclusion of our topic today, is it, you know, when we approach God's word, we ought to submit to approach it with a gentle, humble attitude that says, Lord, I am willing to be taught. You know, for us, different circumstances that we face daily, that's one thing we know about when we read in our great journal. When Rick was thinking, you know, the only way he could receive this knowledge, it is true, you know, coming to the throne in the judgment, in the, in the judgment seat in the throne room. But God is saying every circumstances that we face daily, God is revealing himself to us, in, even in a worse set of times. That is why we say those who patiently endure those tests, they will be given a crown of life. But how can we patiently do it? Because like I said, God already revealed to us how weak we are. How, you know, you see, you are weak and you've been weak. But God's strength is made manifest in our weakness of us acknowledging that we don't know anything, that we want to be, to, to be filled by emptying ourselves, by humbling ourselves like that and acknowledging our weakness. You know, it's like whoever, you know, the point, the way it is quoted, whoever eats correction. And how can you eat correction if you're not humble enough to accept or acknowledge your weakness? You know, when you think about the text that you, know, you are not always right, we are not even right. God is the right one. And even the right that we might feel we have now, it is true Christ Jesus. So for us, we should humble ourselves, be gentle when God is revealing himself to us. You know, we've been in a situation when somebody is, especially me, when somebody is saying something, I'm, I already have response. So the word of God will not manifest in my life because I already came up with something, you know. Sometimes, you know, you get a message that God is trying to tell you, but, you know, you already think that message is for somebody else, but the message is for you. If you're humble enough to listen to it, then you will be honored. That is the, the summation of it. Help, you know, to pray for God to make us open, you know, and willing for his word to terminate. Because like I said, it, you know, when, when, uh, a topic for the past two uh, Sundays uh, in our workers meeting has been the words of, you know, the words of light, of, the words of life. You know, it's, and as Rick said, as he stayed, as he observed the word of God from wisdom, he cleansed him. He made him new. Just like in that word, that's why I said that revelation is not John. James 1 8. It is the, the, words of, the words of truth, the words of life, and the spirit of truth that cleanses us, that makes, makes us new. But if we are not humble, if we are not open for the word to 
germinate, to manifest and be, bring forth fruit, we will continue to struggle. And I hope as we continue to hear him, God is in infinite mercy. We let his word manifest in our life. More contributions, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. We bless God for another day. The Lord is leading us. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. Amen. Flesh will not prevail against us. Amen. Um, you, 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 you people have really, um, you know, analyzed the whole thing just to say something, you know. Um, what I've come to know um, from my experience so far is that, you know, we is total surrender to the Holy Spirit. When we surrender, which I have not been, I'm not there. I'm not there. The Holy Spirit wants to take over our lives. The things that we need, all of our weaknesses, like Brian was saying just now, we must, first of all, appreciate the fact that we are not sufficient in ourselves. We are weak. Christ is our sufficiency. When we, first of all, know that, that there is nothing, there is no, no amount of effort that we are going to put by our own effort that will bring us there. No, we cannot. We don't, we don't have what it takes to produce what God wants from us. The whole, that's why the Holy Spirit is given to us. Ephesians 1, and you know, you say, the, the Bible said that when we believe, when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit is given to us and to, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit against the day of redemption, the redemption of our body, the, the redemption of the purchased possession. We have been purchased by, the, by, by God. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do in us? Okay, look at uh, James, uh, Galatians chapter five. Pastor is always making reference to that. James, uh, Galatians chapter five, verse 25 says, if we, if, we, if we walk by the spirit, we should also live by the spirit. Yeah? Because it's as we live by the spirit that we can please God. And the life of Christ will be produced in us, will be reproduced in us. Who is going to carry out the life, produce the life of Christ in us is the Holy Spirit. There is nothing we are going to do no amount of effort we are going to put in that we make the life of God, Christ, to be reproduced in us, except total surrender to the Holy Spirit. If you look at the early Christians, read God's general, all those Ketrukuma, uh, Smith, Wigglesworth, and all of them, that did great and mighty work, move in the supernatural, uh, in the miraculous, is total surrender. When we surrender to the Holy Spirit, Living a life in the spirit, not allow our carnal mind to, to rule us like all the things we have been talking about. They are fruits of the spirit. Not be, to be patient, not to be angry, to be slow, to speak and all that. They are the, the works, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit can only be produced in us as we surrender to the Spirit. To the Holy Spirit. When we surrender, anything we want to do, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say? Surrender. Look, we, we see how it was ended, the passage of today. That when we come before the Lord, we, we, you know, we, we, we just come in, in, in humility and say, Holy, Holy Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Reveal, to, reveal the mind of Christ, Christ to me. It is the Holy Spirit that will reveal the, even the scripture. When we are reading the scripture, it is the Holy Spirit that will open it up for us. You know, we, if we use carnal matter to read the Bible, we are just reading as literature. It will not produce life in us. But Christianity is not religion. It's life. It's life. And that is the life we have become called it to. But the only way we can really enter into that life is total surrender to the Holy Spirit. When we surrender to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will produce the life of Christ in us. He will enable us, he will grant us the ability to live above sin, 
to live whatever it is, even in the presence of sin, we will have dominion over all. It is the Holy Spirit. It's a gradual work, but we must surrender. If we don't surrender, we we'll continue to we we'll continue to just have a meta knowledge of what the word of God is saying, but it will not be in our experience. But for us to enter into the experience of these things, it is just one word, absolute surrender. Praise God. Thank you very much, man. You know, that word, like you said, it's been a recurring theme in my life. You know, one of the things that I've been praying for recently is to just to yield, you know, to surrender. You know, because most of the time we always drag in control with God. When God is trying to tell us and God is revealed to us, just you, these burdens, you cannot carry it. You are weak, you know, but we want to carry what is in a place of surrender that we are lifted up. So if we don't surrender, we are not lifted up. Uh, and in the place of surrender in Christ, in that Philipp Philippians 2, that he was lifted up. He surrendered his life. And he, you know, he was lifted up and he was given a name. You know, and if Christ is the way for us to get to God, we have to have the attitude of Christ to be able to be lifted up. You know, so for us, total surrender. Living a life as a sacrifice so unto God. That is when we will be able to receive it you know, and receive that crown of life that was revealed in James. Thank you very much, man. Total surrender. Do we have any other contributions? Any other contributions? We don't have any other contributions. Uh, hallelujah. Everything has already been said, honestly, because the major thing is just like, you know, what Sister Bridget actually emphasized on total surrender, total surrender, nothing else. Because if we don't surrender, we won't get any outcome. Nothing. We won't get any. We will continue in the same place, finding ourselves in the same place over and over and over again. Yesterday, I make an attempt yesterday, you know. I was actually asking Holy Spirit concerning something of, as in concerning myself. And one thing is that when we are asking, how are we actually asking? I like that Matthew 7, 7 that Bra, Bra you actually used. How are we asking? Are we truly asking God? And what efforts are we making? And yesterday I actually make effort to be honest with to us. It's like a magic. And I got the results right there, right in front of me, because he can see my heart that I'm actually ready. I've already humbled. I've already surrendered myself, total surrender, giving myself away. And that is the reason why the Bible was telling us that we, could, we should make our body a living sacrifice, acceptable and holy unto God. If we haven't gotten to that point, forget about it. We will, can never change. We will remain the same. It's not an easy thing. It takes a place of prayer and fasting as well with it, depending on how we want it. If we are actually really very, very serious about making impact, we will find it. Because one thing that Felicia, uh, uh, Ephesians 1, 19, kept on you know, making us to understand, he said to those who believe in Christ, he said he has given them that power. That power is in us. But for us to activate it, we need assignment to do on our own. It's really very important. And that is the reason why Christ told us that he came in form of men. He came just like a flesh, just the same way the we, 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 we came. And he went through the same temptation which we are today. It's, he wasn't a God at, the, at that point in time oh. Because if he's still a God, when they are piercing him, you know, beating him, he won't feel the pains. But he came in the likeness of men, in the flesh, where blood and, you know, runs through him. And he said he went through that the same temptation without sin. He went through the temptation. Every time when I'm reading that Bible verse, I'm always reminding myself. It's a thing that we put at the back of our mind. Reminding ourselves that this is what Jesus Christ did. We can do it also. And that is the reason why he said, I've come to give you guys life. 
in abundance and i've come to give you to give you you know peace in abundance not just like the word has given it to you and he's he kept on emphasizing this up on us and that is the reason why he kept on telling us too that we should let our light shine above others how can we let our light shine above others we have to go to the place of fruit of the spirit and the number one thing of that fruit of the spirit if there is no love in us forget about it there is no way we can exhibit or attain or express it except if we have that fruit of the spirit which is number one thing which is love in order for us to shine above others and give glory to god because that is our call our call is to come to this world and to live the same way christ has lived in order for us to draw more onto christ it's not an easy thing even me that i'm talking i haven't gotten there sometimes i'll be 10 percent sometimes i'll be 50 percent sometimes i will still be five percent no one has gotten there but it depends on how much you know we have humbled ourselves and surrender ourselves totally and like sister bridget and everybody said bra bra i just said pastor said it holy spirit is there it's right beside us we don't have to go you know taking a flight to get holy spirit he said it's right be it's right in our mouth and in our heart that is what the book of um deuteronomy told us he said it's right there in our hearts and right there in our mouth i pray that the lord will help us in the mighty name of jesus amen amen thank you very much man. thank you you know is it like you said like it's a, it's a place of surrender you know when we're still struggling but one of the good things, the grace of God, is that we have this opportunity to discuss this. You know, it is, you know, it is out of the abundance of His grace that we can even talk about it because God wants us to be open so that we can be corrected and we can heed to His word and His word can, you know, transform us. And I hope as we continue to gather onto Him, we will not take it, take it for granted and we will truly acknowledge, you know, our weakness and letting. Let his word truly transform us and bear us into his newness. Thank you very much. Uh, and over to the pastor. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sir Bridget. Thank you, Pastor and Mrs. Thank you, everybody that are listening and people that are going to listen later. Uh, listen, we are created by him, for him to be used by him. And the only way we can be effective for him and be and be profitable in our own individual life is surrendering to him until we are able to come to that position to know that we are nothing without him um to be able to humble ourselves and be teachable and be reachable will be very difficult and it's always stretching out it's always having a door that's open only want us to just turn to him and give it all to him if you're listening, and um, you will be listening later, uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you haven't started, uh, you're still in that position that you're not teachable, you're not reachable, and God is calling you today to say, come, I have a place for you. I want to put you in a position where you can live for eternity. If your journey has been that, oh, you have arrived, you, are, you think you've gotten it all, you have not. So surrender yourself to him today. And ask him to please forgive you of your sin. Say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me in your blood. I know you died for me. You are the son of God and you've risen uh, for my sake. I surrender myself to you today. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me of my sin. I uh, confess you with my mouth today that Jesus, you are the Lord over my life. If you say that, that word, just look for Bible believing church close to you. Tell them you have just become born again. And you want to start walking with the Lord and you want to be reachable by him. You want to be teachable by him, by the spirit of God. And they walk with you. If you can find a church, go on the internet and type rccg.org. You will find the redeemed Christian church of God close to you. They will walk with you and guide you in the way that God wants you to live. For the rest of us, we've heard it. The only way we can see God's power manifest in our life it's by surrendering to him. 
surrender to him in the sense that we will see certain things that are not that are that are irritating to us but that irritation there is a message in it do we go to god to say god what are you saying here there's things that will be defensive to us do we stop and say ah this uh, my reaction to this i will not do it instead i will go to god do we say things that people are actually doing to us that may look like a threat to us instead of us to react to that threat do we pause and go to god and say god this look threatening what do you think how shall i go about it do we look at things and think that oh we have been humiliated instead of us to react and as we feel, let's stop and say, God, is it a teachable moment for me? What do you have for me today? So we can find a way to get the interpretation of what God wants to do in every situation. Do you think it's easy for Jesus Christ to go to the cross? In that moment, you think it's easy for him to be nailed to the cross? In that moment, you think it's easy for him to be pierced on the side? In that moment, do you think it's easy for him to take a crown of turn on his head? No, it isn't. He could have reacted based on his human ability, but instead he submit to God. He said, never delay, Father, into your hand I commit my hand. Brethren, I think it's important that we just go right now. Is there anything in my life that is antagonizing and want to stop me from surrendering to God? Father, take them out of my life. Let me, I want to surrender to you. I want to seek you in every area. I want to knock the door to find you. I want to seek you. I want to, I want to call heaven to seek you so you can reveal yourself to me. Even in a bad moment, even in a good moment, I want to see you always, sir. Because when I see you always, I will see how great you are. I will see how mighty you are. I will see how powerful you are because you are the one that can take us out of every situation. Father, humble me. Is there any flesh that is raising himself that wants to be more than who you are in my life? Father, humble that flesh uh, and let your spirit come in fullness in my life uh, that I will only walk according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Every fleshy part of me, Father, crucify them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every part of me that they are arrogant, uh, Father, crucify them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every part of me that they are blaming others for my hero. Father, crucify them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every part of me that wants me to start fighting my spouse because of what she has said or what he has said, Father, let them die. Give me the spirit of humility. Give me the spirit of gentleness. Give me the spirit of peaceful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every arrogant spirit in my life, Father, subdue them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Because, Lord, today is in your hand. Every step we are going to take today, we surrender them to your hand. Father, we pray that as we go out, anything fleshy, anything arrogance, anything that want to cause, that's called pride, Father, subdue them in our lives. Father, we want to be your representative. And anything that will be an attitude that will tarnish your name in our life, Father, let the blood of Jesus flush them out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we, 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 we exalt you this morning and we say, Lord, at the end of today, we will return back to give you glory. We will return back to give you honor. We will return back to give you adoration in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen, amen, amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The one the Lord has blessed shall it be in Jesus' name. Thank you, everybody, for joining, Brian. A wonderful job. Thank you for leading today. May the Lord keep every one of us. May He shine His light upon us, be Amen. gracious to us, and Amen. give us peace and favor all around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is teaching us every step. Don't think that mistake that you made is because you, you do anything. It's because God wants to teach you something. Because people offend you doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It's because there's a teachable moment. Look at every situation and look for God in them. Because when you find God in every situation, that means the situation is resolved. But we never look for God in the situation. We see bad and we start fighting bad. But instead of us to look for God in the bad, when we look for God in everything, we see him coming through to save us in every situation. 
Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. And uh, thank you. Celebrate you. Uh, thank God for your life. Um, love you all. Have a wonderful day. Just enjoy this, uh, this fellowship. And the Lord will continue to keep it and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sir. Thank you.